Hello everyone, this is Albert from the Topic Podcast Network. The following episode is brought to you by the Topic Podcast Network. It is a completely 100% listener-supported network, so if you wanted to help us out, please head to co-fee.com forward slash topic network and also patreon.com forward slash topic network. Enjoy the show. already started singing you know everything coming yeah. up yeah yeah i don't know i don't know if we're gonna have more of those <laughs> not many more impromptu <laughs> london morning performances from rachel uh, Payne. Yes. no sir no man <laughs> okay oh, so goodness. well first of all big hug since like new york oh my god yes yeah oh, guys such a pleasure that was to again <laughs> that was such a beautiful experience and i was so grateful to get to share it with you guys that was really nice i would say that the new york audience was just so much fun yeah. you know that was great wholesome wholesome and and it it's a perfect timing to actually chime back in because now it really like it has revealed itself fully and giant eye rolls from me people are loving everything to do with it uh, and what this, I suppose, leads me to, Rachel, is that you, Cheeky, you, we would not able your perfect poker face. We didn't know you'd actually cameo. We we're probably going to veer way off into Tangent tangent Town from, from Lord of the Rings, obviously. But uh, singing in the Great Wave. I mean, we can, as early as, as you like, we can we can talk about what that was like for you on, on the day. Uh, if oh only, my gosh. Only as much as you'd like to talk about. Yeah. Sure, sure. No, well, what I can say is that I... I had so much fun, you know, being being in this magical world and, you know, just smiling. I couldn't stop smiling, because, <laughs> you know, which is tough given the, the subject matter of the of the scene. Cut, yeah, exactly. cut. Who's the smiling door? <laughs> no, yeah. no, it was it was a really lovely experience. Um, and I, I would say I learned a lot about myself and about about the work and about. Yeah, what what it takes um I mean, it's just such a huge endeavor. All of it is just such a huge endeavor. Yeah. Yeah. The The scale of the work is immense. Um, but what was particularly resonant for Albert and I when we were watching, you know, we had goosebumps through that entire scene uh, because song and music is, is how Tolkien's world begins. Like that's at the very genesis of that universe and that world. And just to see how powerfully you sang in that moment and also just the strength of the women in that scene was exceptionally moving. So I'd, I'd love to know more about that. Like what, what did you learn about yourself and what did it mean to you to be part of that scene and that, that particular time in the story? Well, I have to say that working with Sophia Nombet is such a wonderful experience because Sophia gives everything that she is and you sense that in that scene and you you sensed it that day and there was something really special about that i think um and i can only speak about that because that was the day that i was there <laughs> <laughs> but um but uh but i but yeah that was that was pretty incredible um the second half of what you asked that i'm blanking on what did you what did what was the <laughs> oh just in terms of uh or expressing that particular point of that of the story you know in terms of where we were in terms of what it meant for the women to to sing to the to the elements of what, what well that... singing to the right elements. I singing love to that. the elements right I mean because that is so Tolkienian yeah. I can speak of it from from the standpoint mostly like going back to the ring mythology of Wagner um, like that is something that's always struck me. You know, you have these Rhine maidens and they're singing in, you know, there are three of them, which is a number that comes up very often in mythology, in religion, in, you know, in these various places, um, as, as being a strong number. And in, in Das Rheingold, you know, when the Rhine maidens come out, uh, it's this sort of siren-esque quality and it's alluring, but it's also very much defensive and, you know, it creates this, it begins in a way, the mythology mm. and is sort of the the opening sequence of going in and, and you know, having them sing the ring and then as far as 
mythology goes. Ah. I, if I may, would like to jump in because ever the symbolic lens that I can't help but view all of my life through and this beautifully kindred expression, just the gratitude has just been going up since speaking with you. And that hasn't stopped since New York, by the way. It's just, you know, a giant, a great wave, if you will, of gratitude <laughs> um, is, is this allusion to the rings, which was huge. Uh, Nibelunglied uh, is that the pronunciation. Uh, Nibelunglied. I mean, Nibelunglied. lied is means song, so mm -hmm. the Nibelungen. I think Nib is, is Nibelungen. the yes. Nibelungen. <laughs> Which, um, as a sidebar, the adaptation of Nibelungen has just been approved. That I think, based off of just you know this wonderful again great wave of, of Tolkienian, uh, you know, launching platform of inquiry. People being like, "What inspired Tolkien?" It's like, well, listen to the Lord of the Rings podcast, and Rachel will tell you. <laughs> that it began earlier, earlier than that, and uh, and this this or origining this origin of, of music even before form. Um, mm. I think maybe I should now reveal this is it was all planned. That's why we had to have you first person directly involved, you know, to sort of bear us forth into the rest of the podcast. Like first actual meeting of of when we actually uh, were there on the night uh, to be speaking with a singer and. Tolkien's world beginning with song and you being the first <laughs> guest. So we do feel very kind of, it's like there's been some kind of trial by song has happened now. Um, but that's me, Ray. It... I'm, on, I'm on a tangent, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I don't know that what Tolkien, I believe, has a writing. I think he wrote about having not been influenced by Wagner's Ring, mm. which I think is interesting. Mm. Um, I'm not sure where that is, but I remember <laughs> He's a bit notorious that. for that, though. With lots of love, he'll say, it's not an allegory for World War One, And it's like, John Ronald Rule Tolkien, this is clearly, has some, arguably, and, or maybe not even too arguably, definitively, directly allegorical components, even though, you know, we have to respect what he has stated, and that's true. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's, there were rings before Tolkien, and, and those are very operatic uh, in terms Well, of and there were rings before Wagner. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Like the, the, this mythology goes back very far. Yes. And I think it, it has a staying power and a recreating power because mm -hmm. because it is so fascinating and because it does have, you know, so many different you talk about tangents that you can go on with it. Yes. Um, an endless cycle, yeah. an endless ring, perhaps, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah this, this, this is a great segue, actually, because as, as a musician and an opera singer, uh, you know, we, I think we briefly touched on this, just the timelessness of the themes that are explored in opera throughout uh, throughout its evolution. So as, as you were saying, like what you're singing now, it's, it's based on an earlier mythology, which itself is based on earlier stories. So I'd, I'd love to ask you a couple of questions just about what prompted you to choose music as as your art and your form of self-expression um, to begin with? And then we'll get into other questions afterwards. I would say that music chose me. Mm. Ah, I, I was born, there's a claim. I can't really, <laughs> I, I can't say yay or nay because, you know, I was brand new, <laughs> but there's a claim that I was born singing. Oh, um, beautiful. Yeah. Wow. It's a beautiful idea. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I had my first public appearance when I was probably three years old, where I stood up at a company picnic and just started singing because there was an open mic opportunity. And apparently my three-year-old self thought that that meant I could go. So. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of funny, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've just always sung. I'm so sorry, I have this frog in my throat. That's okay. <clears throat> From singing, I'm sure. I'm kidding. Yeah, well, yeah. Not a lot of that really early in the morning, but like, mm. yeah, um, in general. No, um, so yes, I've always sung, and it's it's just something that I felt that I, I was meant to do. And some people, I think, are come to this world um with a very clear idea of of the gifts they've been given and mm -hmm. what they're supposed to focus on and then there are others that are given the opportunity to to decide for themselves what what they would like to pursue and for me it was much the former where oh my, that's wonderful where, yeah where voices just was what i needed to pursue and when and i had so little understanding that <laughs> what that would mean i remember when i was probably 14 years old 
a dear friend of our family said, well, Rachel, you, you should go to music school. And I said, wait, those exist. <laughs> like, I had no idea. <laughs> and, and then I was like, wait, you mean I don't have to like take math classes anymore? This is amazing. Oh, I love that. So, yeah. So I, yeah, I went to conservatoire because that was, that was where I needed to be. And oh. it's where I, I, you know, studied with some of the foremost people, uh, you know, people writing textbooks on on the works that um, that I was learning, mm-hmm. and and when you reach that place, I think when when you're working with professors that that are the ones writing the work, mm-hmm. I think that's when humility really comes in. Yeah, because once you recognize how vast a topic is and mm-hmm. how much you know but how much you don't know yeah. that's when that's when true humility kind of comes into play because you have you've just been given just a slice of what there is and mm. and you realize what an opportunity that is to be able to explore yeah mm. that's beautiful and and you know just as you were I was as, as you were answering the question I was thinking of um the relationship that artists have with their art you know, from the outside looking in, you know, I'm, I'm not a singer, but, but, but there, there are certain, say, movies or works of art. Uh, I, I think of something like Black Swan or Whiplash, you know, or even... Oh, uh, Whiplash. La La Land, which looks at both the, uh, the consuming nature of something that you feel has, has chosen you or that you feel like you, you're here to, to do or to become great at. So it's, it's really wonderful to, to, for you to speak about that humility. And I'd be curious, it's like, what did, what did you feel compelled to do and, uh, when you did feel chosen and you were so clear that this is, what you, this is your gift and this is who you're here to be? I always find that relationship very, very curious between an artist and, and their art. I'd love to know what it was like for you. I think it's a journey. Just like yeah. these things, right? <laughs> like you're given a kernel of understanding and then it's your job to figure out what that's supposed to expand into. Yeah. And what that expands into, I think, changes over time. Right. So what may begin as, okay, I'm going to go down this path. And then it's like, okay, I've learned what I needed to learn from that. And now I'm going to go this way. And yeah. and that adds to this art. And it also it adds to your dynamic and your... Um, diversity of understanding as a as an interpreter Mm. right so when when you have experienced life you know again going back to tolkien right this is a person who who went through immense grief and loss and all of that adds to the artist all of that adds to the experience that you're able to draw from because your well is deep Mm. so this now makes me want to bring up our six what was it not not even that long how 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 long our conversation because i consider this to just simply be a continuation this is us being able to open up that that um time space pocket and continue what we were speaking about in new york because i honestly in that moment the very fact we had a premiere i guess kind of stopped that from happening but if there wasn't that i'm i would have definitely wanted to just like let's peel off and like talk about leonard cohen <laughs> you know um, oh man right and i and i did want to in that moment because you said you know one's well of self deepens with grief and um and invariably light comes in through where the wounds you know um are um are sort of cut into us and um yeah. And yeah, I'll, I'll throw it to Ray for this one because she she introduced me to that quote from him. Yeah, and and you know there are iterations of this. I think it, it started with Rumi, and then Leonard Cohen had a version of this. So like you say, you know that there are, there's a timelessness to these um, reflections and the way that artists uh, think about you know what shapes them and and who they are. Mm-hmm. So that's that's I feel like that's a really healthy answer <laughs> because you always <laughs> wonder like something that is so consuming or something that you feel like is a part of your identity how do you then navigate that how does it keep continue to shape who you are and what is your relationship with that as time goes on so that's so really- there you there used to be this idea of the muse right or I mean yes. it's still something that we talk about or a genius 
Yes. Mm. People used to talk about how a genius had come to them. Mm. You know, and this idea that genius was not something that was born from within you. It was something sort of set upon you, like given to you. And, you know, or maybe you might call that inspiration or insight Mm -hmm. or, you know, an epiphany. Yeah. And I think all of those things kind of come from the same kernel of something Mm -hmm. having to do with, you know, where, where the source of your knowledge sort of originates and then from there again, like, where do you go with it? Yeah. And I think that when, when we, and I actually feel really strongly about this, when we, when we come from a place of being given something mm. and that that isn't necessarily something that completely originates again from within us, then there's less kind of grabbiness <laughs> in a way, mm. right? You don't, you're like, this is mine. It's like, well, yeah. it was given to me. Mm. And so you feel a certain responsibility toward it. Yeah. And also, Maybe. you know, and a little bit maybe of trepidation, like, is this right? Am I treating this well? It's then like you... it chose you. I'm sorry, I had, because I feel <laughs> this like, is I so informative. Exactly. <laughs> it, it, chose us, it chose us to express itself through. And I see that almost, you know, we, I had a friend, a friend's birthday, friend's child's birthday I went to yesterday and, and they just had another child and she's a couple of months old and I just looked at her and I was like you're just fresh from the cosmos aren't you <laughs> fresh from the ether and um and yeah it kind of made me think of uh, how the universe chooses us as humans to express itself from to to, to experience itself from a, a, an individual and how that's how it, it it wants to do that many, many times. Otherwise, the universe would be like, "Okay, I'm done. I'm, I've, I've experienced enough of humanity." But that the fact that we keep being born with as many unique thoughts and as many unique way, modes of expression as we do it seems like it's expanding and continually finding new ways. And I think we do a bit of that ourselves. And Tolkien again, he, he was a, a, a mythopoeic, I think is the word, or a, pa- a, a paracosmist, like creating his own, hmm. continuing that fractal of creator, creation, creator. And when I when I hear sentiments like that about like this thing chose me to express itself through, it's like, okay, that's that's a continuation of that. And it's um there's something just truly quintessential about it and, and something that really rings of um purpose and rings rings of um uh just quiddity. What what's the word, right? It's just like the, the pure essence of isness of like why we are alive, you know? I love that word quiddity, mm-hmm. by the way. It's a yeah, good one. Quiddity. <laughs> you know, I, it's interesting because I think you have different personalities in the world, right? Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Myers-Briggs, oh, but yes. <laughs> like the introvert extrovert or the yeah. thinker or the judger and, you know, all these different things. And I think this kind of expression of experience, this kind of impression of purpose is something that not necessarily um, everyone can relate to. No, because there are people who are like, I don't ever f- feel that way at all. <laughs> like, right. I feel like, okay, I need to do this, 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 and this, this right? Is, mm. And I go through my day, and this is what I do. And because I'm supposed to, or because it makes sense, because it makes mm-hmm. sense, mm-hmm. right? And so many choices, I think, as artists are often made not because necessarily they make sense, but because it just feels right. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that 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 can be a really tough thing um you know for I, I don't know but i think for artists especially it's something that that happens a lot yeah like what is your i myers briggs if we I may know like you're an i, I and an n yeah interesting I'm, maybe i don't know maybe an s because you're a musician and i don't okay. know between a p or a j i'm gonna go with the p Okay. Could be a J. INSP. Okay. <laughs> ISFP or an ISFJ, but just from a very cursory knowledge yes. of Vibe you. analysis. Yeah. And... Maybe you... by the end of the hour, you will know. No. <laughs> okay. It shall not be revealed. <laughs> yeah. Am I close like... or not? Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> she just <laughs> she just took a sip. Say, it's all good. <laughs> I would say like some of those are right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, yeah, I'd love to know. Maybe you're an INFP. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I <laughs> and and I like to reflect back when I'm feeling certain vibes will obviously flow on. We have some questions and all that. 
but especially with a lot of what you've expressed just just then uh, Rachel in terms of like purpose and and life being so much more than just a binary like should do this will do this must do this mm -hmm. like in, in entertaining not just entertaining but stepping into and living from that place of being comfortable with with that entropic kind of potentiality you know and finding purpose amidst you know like being in there with, with the reality of, of the changeability and the potential of life like um ray and i talk about all that time talk about this all the time and very rarely do we find other people who speak the same language and so <laughs> i just feel i feel like i've just seen that gift between was it um john riley and, <laughs> and will farrell like did we just become best friends like between you and between <laughs> oh, ray totally. and rachel right I now hear that it's the love is real so oh, it's true i mean albert and i we're not we don't do small talk very well you we know don't. so even even when I we understand. for the first I, I do you feel like you're oh my gosh no yeah. The, yeah no small talk is can be very challenging for me yeah yeah, yeah. so that's why it's like when we met you life is too like, short yeah we're talking about short. grief and war and i'm just like let's get into it you know it's just yeah like, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. about some of your um, musical influences and musicians yes. and storytellers that have shaped you um, and the art that you do. I know you have a vast knowledge of musical history given uh, what you do, but I'd love to know the, the ones that are very significant to you. It's interesting. In So in high school, so I've always sung, but I... I very often didn't follow opera singers or even singers in general. I I listened to like in high school I listened to like 50s pop. Like I listened yes. to oldies. And cool. I would listen to like why, Rachel? Why? <laughs> like, and I would listen to a lot of classical music, mostly piano or string quartets, um, things generally in the romantic period. Mm. Uh, that's the period that sort of spoke to me the most. And in opera, I would say verismo. So I'm more influenced, I would say, by sort of genres of music and and then maybe particular performances. Um, like I just was in, I was in Paris a few weeks ago and I saw, um, Dudamel conduct the Mahler 9 and I was in tears. Like I was weeping yeah. and yeah. I was weeping because there were moments where he held the audience mm -hmm. as intensely as he held the orchestra. Wow. And it's that kind of communication, right? It's that kind of of conversation between participant and and teacher or or you know giver mm. yeah. that when when that happens yeah. um that's when you really feel that art is being created mm. and so the 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 influences for me i mean there's certainly singers like that i love you know and i think the the one that is probably the most famous and the one that most people know is Maria Callas. Mm -hmm. um, and Callas famously said, you know, during like one of my favorite stories of her, I, I will often go to her. I will go to her to listen first to an aria or to, you know, to a role that I'm I'm looking at, if it's something obviously in my wheelhouse, because I'm a mezzo and she's a soprano. She did some suspicion, so she switched between sometimes. But I, it, but if she has anything that that I'm that I'm working on, I will first listen to her once, and I won't listen to it more than that because if you have a really, you know, if you have an ear, like it's very easy to copy. So I, for any of the young singers out there listening to this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, right, like mm -hmm. listening, listening once through, um, and hearing her break, like hearing he hearing her character break, even though the voice is still fluid mm. and connected and beautiful and and innocent and 
and always. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like there's there's a sense of um when so when she she was performing with Toscanini and I think this was in Milan and she was performing the role of Violetta in La Traviata which is Beautiful. one of Verdi's most probably is Verdi's most famous opera. Yeah. And in the fourth act, you know, she's dying of consumption, I believe it is. And she sings this aria because that's what Verdi likes to do. He loves to say, all right, you're dying. Here's a 20 minute piece. <laughs> um, <laughs> have at it. <laughs> yeah. With the <laughs> last breaths. <laughs> <laughs> your last breath, you will sing something will glorious. Sing. 20 minutes. <laughs> so, yeah. and, and in the, so as the story goes, she's singing this aria. And as she comes in, in the high pianissimo at the end, her voice cracks and it cracks again and again at each rehearsal. Wow. And in the dress rehearsal, Toscanini apparently goes up to her and says, you know, diva, it's okay. You know, it's okay. If the voice breaks, it breaks, don't worry. Mm -hmm. And she says to him, maestro, it must break. She's dying. Mm. So I think what I love most about Callas is her commitment to a character. Yes, and this is the actor component of you, I think. There you go. Yeah. Early the formative. Commitment to the character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I when I first went to a few operas, when I first was going to school in New York, and we would get these cheap tickets to the Met because people would take pity on students. Um, <laughs> I I would go and and I would sit and listen and think like, I don't know if I can do this mm. because I I felt this lack of connection between character and like the believability of a performer and the performance. Right. And then every once in a while I would see someone where I'm like, yes, if it's that, I can do that. Mm. I can do that. <laughs> like I can get behind that thing. Mm. And and so these stories of people like, like Kalas, you know, or people whose voices just are so transcendently beautiful that you just sit and bask in in their beauty. Mm. Like you can't even say anything. It's just so beautiful that you're just silent mm. and grateful to have that moment. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, I am. Oh, I, I'll bet you go. I'm leaning in. And when you start seeing the lean, you can't stop me. I, I have to. <laughs> First of all, I'm making a podcast covenant, which are binding by the way, for us all to go to the opera at some point, um, mm. somewhere. So that's happening. To hear you sing, I would love that. To hear yeah. you sing, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Pile into a minivan, you, JD. I'm going to bring, so Ray, but also, here's, here's what I would like to do, actually, <laughs> is um, I don't know if it's possible to go, I don't know if you've maybe even done this, Rachel, is... Um, I could I could honestly watch opera and, and theater performance all day because I, I'm seeing people on stage giving me their energy and it and directly, viscerally, no screen, no silver, no filter. This is live and hap happening in front of me. And I I'm an introvert, but I get so much emotion just out of seeing it being someone on stage, which is irreplaceable, not from yeah. AI, not from VR, not from robots. It can never be replaced. Yeah. And I find that that adds such a purity to what you do. And yeah. I can absolutely relate to those moments of silence, even if it was super early for me, because I grew up in Italy hearing like um, La Donne Mobile, like sung by like nuns or whatever. Like it was. Oh, just... absolutely. <laughs> it is a part of the culture. Absolutely. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And, so. and you know, we follow. So I think we've seen La Traviata a few times. So yeah, we that's right. In Rome. We saw it in Sydney, you know, so we, we and and. and Every time, you know, because it's not just the singing that's happening, the story is also being told differently. And you see elements of the woman come out, you know, in the way yeah. that she sings the song. And it's such a privilege, really. It's a, it's a true honor uh, mm -hmm. that to, to go to the theater and, and, and bear witness to that. Yes. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's incredible. Um, I, I also wanted to ask you, uh, like, what makes a great opera singer what are the Ooh. like what are the elements 
um, you know, for, for, for anybody tuning in or if they're wondering, because, you know, sometimes, like you say, when, when there's that moment, which is so transcendent, you can't quite put your finger on it. It's just like, what is it about this person that has fully captured me? You know, the poets may call it something akin to the sublime or, you know, just, just something where you don't quite know what that experience is, but, but you feel it. Um, but in your experience, it's like, what are the different factors and variables that make a great opera singer? I think great opera singers are a combination of, and thank you, thank you for asking that because I've never really thought of it in that way. Like, what is it that makes a great opera singer? But I think it's a combination of beautiful singing, beautiful interpretation, and space, like space for, mm. for being. Mm. influenced like influenced by you know obviously like great directing um great set design you know there are there are sets the that moment. are used by... it's like spontaneity i love that yeah you must right you must be able to you know what is what is she like tonight because what uh -huh. she's like tonight will be different than what she was like four nights ago when you performed it <gasps> like taking away the contrivance like eliminating wow. any kind of artifice just purely channeling that the truth of the person the human being in that moment that's beautiful mm -hmm. again this could be applied to acting as well you know sure i mean mm -hmm. anytime you're in a show that has repeat performances you do have to ask those questions right you have mm -hmm. to ask okay where where is she right now in order to make sure that it's fresh yeah. make sure that it's it's what it is right now for this audience truth and keeping yeah. keeping with all of the you know expectations and constraints and needs yeah but, yeah that's yeah. that's quite a, a task emotionally right to be that present and that yeah. receptive <laughs> uh to everything that is changing within yourself and your environment and then uh, being able to stay with your conductor, yeah. <laughs> right? And you have to, you know, it's <clears throat> it's it's different than than some other vocal art forms, yeah. potentially where where they will just wait for you. You mm -hmm. know, like there may be an eighty piece orchestra underneath you that can't just wait for you. <laughs> yeah. So so even if you are feeling something, you have to feel it within the constraints again of what mm -hmm. what is expected, what is needed. Yeah. You know, for that performance and for that performer. Oh. Uh... I think I might, this is, I'll try and keep it to a duology of moments of, of this. However, from you saying, because I also want to be conscious and make sure that things are expressed before if you have to dash or anything. But um, <laughs> so I would love Rachel Payne's singing to the elements and to have you sing to each of the elements, it, like to impress, to sort of actually address, you know, the five elements, like a beautiful operatic performance of that. I think that's been conceived here and I would love to see that. Um, I'll be the um, marketing director if I have to. It's all good. Amazing. Um, <laughs> and I suppose that does lead me. We have actual questions, but now it's just so flowy and vibey. Is there something that is of um, uh, that is akin to that, that, that you might be building um, in terms of your own composition and your own sort of concept yes okay all right if, if you and oh, anything you you'd like to discuss anything that i want to discuss about you know it's interesting since since coming here to the uk i've been excuse me i've been looking at um you know what is what is the reason why i'm drawn to specific kinds of opera like, what is it about Verismo that I love so much and why? Why do I love Verismo? And then on sort of the design, the flip side of that, like if you're talking about other elements, so like that's that's sort of one component. I've been thinking about how, how my environment affects how I feel mm -hmm. and like what creates an environment that is conducive to creation mm. and to, you know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and these are things that I've been thinking about a lot and about um, and I, I may actually begin pursuing either a PhD or um, a DMA to talk about these different elements and like how they how they come together. And yeah, so I'm Very I exciting. yeah, so I have I have, you know, performing hopes, but then I also have other hopes um, that are a little bit more academic just because I think that I think that 
opera and art and a lot of classical music actually could really benefit from from going back to you know where there was sort of I feel like there was a little bit of a divide and maybe that's controversial to say but I feel like classical music became extremely heady for many many years yeah. where where it was it was an academic experience and process rather than necessarily a an emotional connective um opportunity and experience yeah. and and then so I'm very interested and curious to sort of look into that more and to dive into it and that's in, that's incredible congratulations <laughs> yes please <laughs> we'll I, see I, <laughs> well, I just love that the the drinking of the of the drink is now a <laughs> statement it's part of your sort of vocabulary I is appreciate it? that <laughs> is, is it <laughs> there you go. Like to... Yeah, no, I love that, you know, and, and, you know, one of the things that's very interesting about the evolution of music is how the influence, like the past will influence the present and the future, the sort of tapestry, you know, that that's being woven throughout time. Um, like, you know, classical music has evolved. Um, I, I would also like to know if you feel like opera is evolving, if you, if you think it should evolve, like, how do you think it can meet the moments that that we're in uh culturally and how can opera uh serve us in terms of you know where we are at this point in time as well i think that's i i think about that sometimes uh especially you know when there are conversations about the relevance of certain art forms and uh yeah its impact today so just i'd love to hear from you about what you think so this kind of makes me think about, and I promise it will be related. This yeah. makes me think about. <laughs> um, I love the caveat. <laughs> yes. So Olympians. Yeah. Like Olympic sport, in some ways you could say, what's the relevance of that today? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, do we really, is the shot put? Like, where are you going to use it? <laughs> you know? Like, how are you going to, right? Um, All the shots put yet... instantly unsubscribed. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh no, no, please no. no. Okay. <laughs> um, no, no, but the, when you when you watch what the human body can do mm. in extreme circumstances, right? Yeah. Or with extreme training when you watch a figure skater or a runner or you know any any number of sports mm -hmm. and you see someone and i especially love the the single person you know mm. sports where where here's a person doing gymnastics and you watch yes. their routine and you see the body do things that are really truly incredible right and and so few people can do that and the ones that can, it's it's inspiring in a way mm. because it shows you what we are potentially capable of yeah. as humans. Yeah. And I feel like opera, when, when sung well and when performed well is actually very similar to an Olympic sport. It's, it's working with the tiny muscles. Mm. Wow. And when those little muscles are in alignment and when they are free, they're able to produce something that really is inspiring. And so I think that as long as, you know, as long as there is merit and there is a purpose for that and an appreciation for that, that there is a, there is a purpose and a place for, for the art form. Yeah. Brilliant. I I want to yeah um yeah. gosh like that uh, triple quadruple under, quintuple underlined that because I I think we touched on this I've since come up with a few other you could call them curmudgeonly things but you know scroll pass culture um, you know <laughs> erosion of attention span culture uh, where where there is a a strange disconnect as you said a divide with um with things getting attention and getting accolades and getting um, everything which would only be the domain of those who spent months painting you know like the the level of praise that a lot of people are getting with relatively little effort um 
that has to i think opera will, will con has been and will continue to be a pillar for that that sense of the earned um you know the the the, the earned wonder and the earned spectacle that that it takes because it is rigorous my mum is a singer as i mentioned on the night um and she's going to start singing some more too. I think you may have this. You may have shuffled the ether a bit when we met. Yeah, she's, she's recently been talking about that now. So, um, well, I think, it's it's yeah. so tough. Like if you've trained to be in your field an Olympian, mm. and you didn't make it to the Olympics, what's your purpose? Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of people really struggle with. What's the point of doing something if you aren't going to be able to be seen by the entire world? Oh, see, that's dangerous. That's the instant gratification era's like nightmarish future is if you only do things for the likes. And I get a bit, you know, jaded when I see, hopefully this isn't for all of them, but people filming things like giving certain people haircuts or donating money down the street. It's like, is that coming from love or is that coming from exhibitionism? An advantage taking and, and it sort of muddies the waters a bit but once again there's nothing i think it's also the opera voice ray you know how it just piercingly like fills a room like cuts through all of that yeah. that purity of the voice it's just it's grounding like i just my god i think we're, we're just this is our sort of wake up call to hopefully to all the listeners as well pushing their you know uh, trolleys and everything that people do when listening to podcasts is like Book, book, book your local opera tickets. Like, listen to Rachel. Like, go, get, let, let that let because it's you, you're you're being you're basking in it, aren't you, right? And I feel that too, probably as well. For, Absolutely. Yeah. I am, I am curious though. Is there something that you would tell your younger self or young artists today yes. who may have iterations of that feeling or that sense of doubt? Mm -hmm. uh like in a, in a culture where there is a lot of like preoccupation with status and and uh glory uh what would you tell someone be it a young artist or yourself about the purpose of art and being true to one's art the phrase that keeps coming to my mind is to be your own kind of beautiful Ah, oh, Rachel. <laughs> I think I mean, that that doesn't that doesn't like originate with me. Like that's something that that I was taught as a young person. Mm. Yeah. But I think that there is, but there is there is merit and there is uh, there is a reason for that, right? Because yeah, the thing is when when we see someone succeed yeah. in whatever whatever field it is, it's like oh maybe I should do that. Mm -hmm. As a young person, that's sort of what we go to because you're taught to emulate things initially when you're learning something in That's order right. to be able to to understand a process mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but once you have that process understood then then comes the moment where okay so what what am i contributing like what is the part of this that's me mm. and if we spend all of our time in a cubicle or in a test tube or in a you know on you know in the practice room if we spend all of our time in those places, like you create a wonderfully technically beautiful thing, but you don't have, it's not lived in. Mm -hmm. And the way to make something beautiful to me for yourself is to have life experience and to, and to be unafraid to fall. Mm -hmm. Because the only way that you know how to get back up again, you know, as if, as if you've fallen. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of, there's a lot of fear it, when something has such a history and something is so richly um, scrutinized, yes. right? Like there's yeah. so much scrutiny. It's like, oh, well, so-and-so did it this way and you did it mm. that way. And I don't know, because this is the one that's preferred, you know, or whatever, <laughs> like whatever that thing is. Wow. Um, and yet you yourself, all you can offer is who you are mm. and who you are is beautiful because no one else is like you. Ah. The irrepeatability you know, of selfhood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's stunning. Yeah. That's beautifully said. And, and, you know, this is true for all art in, in that artistic process as well, which is the, what is that dance, you know, because as an, as an artist, you're also refining your skills. You're taking on stuff that other uh, others are saying slash maybe a new book, a new performer, right? There is a dance where others are contributing <clears throat> to what you're doing. 
but but the goal of that is for you to refine yourself and to become the best of who you are what is what is that dance for you how, how do you take feedback or others into account as you're getting better at what you do I think it's so important to know that if more than one person has said a thing, maybe it's a thing. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> like, um, <clears throat> and and with whatever that thing is, yeah. is it something that can be changed or cannot? And the only way you can know that is if you're really honest with yourself. And if you surround yourself by people that you truly can trust, mm. who are in, who have your best interests at heart, you know, as as well as find fulfillment in the process of helping you become the best version of yourself as an artist. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. Great answer. Absolutely agree. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love that. Oh man. Okay. Um, well, I I will, I, mean, I will ask you about your podcast in a second, but this, <laughs> this is, given that this is the Lord of the Rings podcast, I would I would love to also know what you think of of the of the music of that show. Uh, as I know you've been watching, and as as a viewer and as an artist, Ray, uh, yeah. <laughs> you mean what do you think of the Rachel Payne less music, which causes me pain? That causes me pain. The fact there's no pain. <laughs> causes me pain this is, it's difficult for me yeah, there's too it's little of you we'd like to see more of you we you have know, to see more. singing um we, yeah. we had fiona apple uh and you know it, it was it was lovely and i could also it would be such a delight to, to hear you sing in, in one of the episodes too That's i right. love the quality of her voice on that piece i think it's mm -hmm. so great because she has this really cool it's just a really cool quality and um yeah, I really enjoy. I really enjoy what she did with that. Um, I, you know, I'm I'm just ha I'm happy to to see things unfold. I'm just okay. happy to see how this show is doing and what it's doing. I I've loved. I've just loved this journey. You know, I, I, again, I can't. <clears throat> I mentioned this before, but I'm so sorry. I've got this frog in my throat. It's driving me crazy. It's cool. There's this amazing <laughs> thing. It's called editing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be I know. Editing. Now I'm, oh. No frogs. <laughs> It'll be a yes, frogless. No frogs. Frogless, Law. Jerry. Law. <laughs> no, no frogs, Jerry. <laughs> huh. Okay. Um, so yeah, these are some of the vocal warm-ups. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. They sound like various kinds of, you know, who even knows what kind of creatures we sound yes. like. Um, I, 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 yeah, I'm excited about the music. I'm excited about, you know, where it is, where it's going, all the different themes that have been created. I'm excited to hear different ones. I'm excited to oh see gosh. how it expands and, you know, and what what it will be and what it is and all of that. You know, I'm not as a, I'm, I'm not a spokesperson for the show, so I can't, no, I, I can't say oh, anything. Like, so what you're just... saying is you're going to be singing the theme of Rune when we visit in season two. <laughs> and you're going to help define that whole sonic landscape and you're kind of going to take charge of that is that yeah. pretty much what, <laughs> what i'm getting I'm, I'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> um hilarious. ad take note yes give the people what they want Amazing. Oh, so funny. No, I love that. It would be such a treat to, to hear you sing. Um, it will. And it will be. No, no, it will be. Because it, it will, we will be. Manifest exactly. It. Not the conditional. Putting it out into Yes. Putting it out We just have to get you to too. come over to Australia so you can sing for us at the Opera House. All right, mate? Mm. All right. Mm. We have a bloody That's Opera House. Yeah. Indeed, a great Opera House. <laughs> You you just did an amazing uh, Australian accent, I think. Um, <laughs> For like two Yeah, seconds. not very good. You I, and I've noticed throughout it, the impeccable Italian pronunciation too. I think you must have an empath an, an empathetic affect that you adopt the accents of those around you. I think you am I am it's I right? It's funny. So when I was in Paris, well, one of the things that you do as an opera singer is you do study pronunciation pretty extensively and you learn IPA, which is the International Phonetic Alphabet, mm. so that you can pronounce different things and, and then things obviously get tweaked as you go to make sure that, that you're doing things correctly. But one of, the, one of the things that I run into that actually can be problematic is when I'm in a place where I, I speak a little bit of the language, but I have excellent pronunciation oh, and yes. so people just assume <laughs> that I'm fluent and then they'll just start speaking to me and my eyes just get really big and I have to stare like what oh, have no. I done <laughs> what have I, I done to myself you know, then, like, you know yeah. but your but, but your accent is perfect I'm like yeah yeah I'm a, yeah you haven't you know like, I, don't know what... I didn't notice yeah, yeah. 
I love that. I love that. I mean, you know, at least for for you, it's pronunciation. Sometimes um, people, this this happened in America a few years ago. I think someone assumed that I was Hispanic or or Latina (laughs) just by looking at me and they started asking me for directions in Spanish. (laughs) I said, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. (laughs) And then the person was like, you should be ashamed of yourself. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You were like. It's like, I didn't ask for this. Did not America. even give me a chance. <laughs> just, 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 just I was not expecting to feel bad about this today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. About not being Spanish. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I had let my Aww. people down, you know, because I didn't speak the language. But so I just I, had no chance. Such I have thing. to, I actually, as an Australian, I actually need to maybe even double down because I was doing a pretty bad, like I was not very super duper Australian. I was doing an impression of Jeff Morrill who plays Waldrig on the show. Uh, aka mm-hmm. Joe Sandlands from Rake, which you would, a show you would love, um, and he also is a is a musician and an actor as well. Mm-hmm. And so, what I think I'm I'm always kind of conceiving of these things, thinking of names, like when the opportunity presents itself. I'm always thinking of kind of interesting ways. So it's you coming to Australia. He'll be your sort of opening act. I think he does. He he plays banjo. I think so. Oh. Opening for you. And I just right, and I just think this needs to happen, and maybe we'll get the opposite in the opera houses people to talk to you. Amazing! <laughs> this is a this is. I love that. I would yes. enjoy that yeah. so much. Aldrig um, and Dwarf singing at the tour. Um, but I do want to say now, like the focused, serious question is: Will you please come to Australia and grace us with your presence at the actual opera house? Will you do this, Rachel? Putting you on the spot. Um, Sure, I would love to do that. You know, right. if someone sends me a contract and says, here's okay. the role we're thinking of. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. That would be All amazing. Right. Yeah, yeah no, that sounds wonderful. But just as you were talking about opportunities, it just <laughs> reminded me of the name of your podcast. It's great. Operations Opera. Oh, Operation Opera. <laughs> which, is, which is a great, you know, jeu de mots, great play on words. And uh, I'd, I'd love to know... Um, it sounds like a, a, a it sounds like a podcast Fraser would listen to, and we're just we're I'm all about that right now. <laughs> I think, think Fraser Crane would love this, to be honest. Yeah. Amazing. yeah. Um, tell us a bit about it. What is the premise of the podcast? Mm-hmm. What are the conversations you really enjoy having on it? And then we'll we'll tell people where to find you if yep. they if they want to know more. So a fellow soprano and I, a dear friend of mine, Elisa Peterson Larson, who. At, we were having these conversations where we would talk very deeply about art and what we thought and like the importance of you know f- finding people that you can that you can really commune with and that you can talk mm. about the challenges of being an artist and also the challenges of being a young artist yes. and we would talk about you know challenging auditions or you know really beautiful transcendent moments and and as we were chatting about these things she said we should just record these because these are so great and I thought <laughs> oh yeah, okay and so I said well what if we do a podcast and she said yeah let's do a podcast so we um we thought about different names and then she actually thought of that she was like what about operation opera and i and then just all the wheels started turning i'm like okay here's what it would look like this is what it would be and the reason why we wanted this is because we felt like growing up you know in Mm. it when we were in college you know just just a few years ago um (laughs) we felt like there just weren't there weren't it's not like there's a support group for an opera singer and the reason being is because it is such an individual journey mm. and very often there is a lot of sort of critiquing of people yeah. there's a lot of oh man that you know that note was a little flat or oh wow she just straight toned on that and that should have been really spot you know just a lot of chatter <laughs> yeah. and a lot of things that can get into your head or teachers that say things and that stay with you because you're young and impressionable and so we wanted to create a conversation, a place for a conversation where people would talk about all of these different things and then talk about the reasons of why, why they stay, Mm -hmm. why they keep making art, you know, what their most um, influential experiences have been in order to hopefully uh, give people a little bit more of a roadmap. um, And also so that we don't, I, I find often in in audiences you have you have a couple of different kinds of people you have people who are the appreciators that come because they just have fallen in love with opera or they were introduced to it as a child or they were introduced to it later in life right like and and this is your core like as audience you need a bigger support of this because what's happening is that 
I think so many people who end up not performing still enjoy the art form, um, still love it, mm -hmm. but they then become an audience member instead of a participant. Mm -hmm. And with that comes a lot of judgment mm -hmm. and unfulfilled mm -hmm. dreams and sadness and loss. Wow. And when you carry all of that energy with you into a performance space, it is felt like it is felt by those performers. And I want to create a space where people feel supported enough to know that whatever they have to contribute at whatever level is worth something because yeah. they were given a gift and that gift is something to honor because they're worth honoring. Wow. So I want to encourage that and um and hopefully have more conversations like we have conversations that sort of run the gamut like we sometimes we'll just chat about a specific performance that we found moving and then other times and often we have guests and we talk about anything from you know we had a guest that was a yoga a yoga instructor somebody who yeah who just understood the body from a from a place of you know how everything is you know synchronistic and how oh, those things fit together stunning. Yeah. and yeah so we we talk to all different a kinds fellow of fellow eclecticist yeah oh, like yes. yeah yeah it's a bit because I, it is all I, related is it not yeah mm, I, I i love that so much just the sort of intersectional conversations that you have and i think it's more enriching to see and bring other fields and to see the similarities between different types of artists and art. Uh, and just as you were saying, like this could easily apply to someone who is painting or someone who is dancing. Universality. You know, it's, it's the same sort of hero journey, if you will, right? Yes. That everybody yes. goes through. Uh, we it's had visual artists. Yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. Go on. Yeah, please. No, 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 no. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. No, I said we've had visual artists. It just made me think of it like this painting behind me in the center. That is from an artist friend of mine, uh, Jackie Leishman. And we had her on the show and, you know, talked about, you know, what it is to get yourself into the room that you're going to be creating in. Mm. To get yourself physically in there, to get yourself emotionally in there, like to be able to be present so that you can allow the ideas to flow, you know, find find ways for things to sort of communicate with with each other, you know, with the material that she's using. And, you know, as as an opera singer, it's like, OK, how do you get yourself in the practice room? Yeah. And, you know, you're dealing with the components of, you know, language and meter and, um, you know, time period and you know all of these all of these different elements that 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 add up to the fabric or to, you know, to the canvas of, of your creation. Ah, oh, mm. that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. And so it's like, even if you are doing a different creative process, the elements or the questions are shared uh, mm -hmm. between artists in different fields. And so, yeah, I can't recommend, you know, any of the our listeners to, um, just listen and hear different yes. types of conversations across different fields because it's intersectional. Really, yeah, yes. you know, it just it can reach you in unexpected ways. And I do think that the podcast itself is something that has begun to flourish in the last several years because conversation has been something that a lot of people have been unsure how to have. Mm. Because we live in an age that is very quippy right mm -hmm. lots of quips back and forth and lots headlines. of headlines uh. you know, headlines short statements little things that um that cause us to um you know to tune in for a moment and then to yeah. tune back out again or you know only only an image sometimes yeah mm -hmm. and and what does that do to our ability to to actually commune with another yeah mm -hmm. and to build relationships and to speak absolutely Oh my goodness. Um, as a fellow podcaster, I need to talk about how I very much visualize the the effects. And I actually speak with Ray about this, about her work too, with uh, the leadership mentoring work you do, Ray, of the ripple effect, which I always like to be the person holding mirrors up to what Ray does every day, obviously, and now with you, Rachel, with um, absolutely just in the way you hold yourself and speak on or off a podcast i'm certain that it has this effect in your sphere of, of friends and listeners and, and and colleagues as well fellow artists that it is heartening and that it is it it it, it creates a a ripple of of um call to action um of you know 
wanting to go further than just the humdrum, just the autopilot, you know, uh, conveyor belt of life and just really yeah, saturate into what is truest for you and, and, and just keep that encouraging that ongoing process of self-authenticity is just so beautiful. And I, I, I very quickly condensed all of that on the night on in New York. I tried to, <laughs> and, but, uh, but there's no words really for it because it goes beyond words, doesn't it? You know, the, the gratitude. So. No, I, I agree. I sometimes say like a book or a, or a, you know, an opera or a classical music concert or a podcast. It's like, it's a reward for having an attention span, you know, it's like, yes. it's oh man. <laughs> it's like, if you stick yes. it out. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's, that's a present. You, know? yeah, you okay. have no idea the gift that is waiting for you on the other side. So yeah, just just doing your part to encourage depth and, yes. and uh, that true sort of exploration of oneself and one's mm -hmm. creative process, I think is absolutely crucial in today's yeah. world. I think also giving space for the fact that sometimes those things are really boring <laughs> and hard to get through. Like sometimes it's a slog yeah, and you have to just kind of wade through it. Yeah. And to know that, that that's okay, because I think sometimes people coming into the world of opera or any, any art that requires time, right? You, you wonder like, oh, maybe it's just not for me because I don't get it. Mm. And that feeling of not getting something right away, or it didn't, I didn't really love it. And it's like, well, you know, <laughs> it, it, sometimes it has to ferment a little, <laughs> like mm -hmm. sometimes it just has to Marinating. Age. <laughs> right. Yeah, it needs to marinate. It needs to, and then, and then you'll, and then you'll just have a bite and be like, oh, okay, that's what it is. And to to allow that space, allow that growth to be there, and you might find yourself pleasantly surprised. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. No, I love that. My and, word. Um, and and you know, just we've spoken a lot about your art, uh, art and your creative process. Um, are there any? And and you know, we know some of the values that are important to you creatively. Um, what are the values like matter to you, like as a person, as a friend, as someone that you are in the world, um, that either complement or that is additive to, to how you show up creatively? I, I would consider myself to be a pretty honest person. Yeah. Um, whether I like it or not. <laughs> and whether others <laughs> like it or not. It's just, that's it. I love that. That's a very diplomatic answer. Yeah. Nice. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I show up and it's, I, it is what it is, mm -hmm. you know, and, and hopefully that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, and what else did you were asking about? Like, what about me personally? Yeah, just um, values that ground you, that uh, just add. I think the biggest one, and it's going to be a little bit crass. Go I for it. it. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. That's great. Um, Safe space. But <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, it's that it's something that that I from a very young age that I just sort of felt and has been something that's very equalizing for me when I meet people. And it's that everybody poops. Yeah, everybody Sorry, poops. It's a little bit crass. My version of like, that is everyone's made of atoms. It's the, it's the equalizer like, at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day depending on the person like everyone. like Asshole. and we all like it is it you know and so there's this sense of we all need certain things like we all need water we all need food we all Dude, like we sleep. all we all get sick we all all of these things like these are the great equalizers mm -hmm. we all and and i think because of that um for me when i meet people it's like well who are you yeah you know because there there may be things that are said about you there may be things that um that have been written there may, but mm -hmm. who are you yeah because i love that because I, I, I here it is yeah sorry to interrupt i <laughs> I, I ascribe ma magic to the feminine full stop and i think the the most empowered and the the, the beautiful ability to strip you know, to strip someone of any contrivance of like, who are you though? I don't care what's presaged you. I don't know what's care what's been yeah. said, what it, what's preceded you. It's like, who are you in this moment? How do you show up, and what do you bring? 
And I find, again, very good that there are people like that in the world. Thank you for being that way. Because you create, again, this ripple effect of like, of, of seeing. And, and you can only get a, a Rachel Payne vocal register of just like, I'm, I'm sorted, like I'm on a journey, I'm seeking, but there's no uh, up here heightened kind of whatever. There's just someone who's like, who are you? Like, let's, let's, let's be curious, let's be present, let's be even. And even keel people, well-rounded people, and truth-seeking people are like my people. So, yeah, mm. more, more gratitude. <laughs> yeah, because it helps us to be able to actually get to the thing itself. Yeah. Instead of everything that's sort of covering it up along the yeah. way. All mm -hmm. the flowery stuff. Right. All the fluff and all the things. It's like, oh, I don't, I don't want you to see me because what yeah. if you don't like me? And it's like, <laughs> no, but you're beautiful because you are a creation. Uh -huh. And that means that you're beautiful. And so you don't have to worry about that. And mm -hmm. I think that is something that I try and show up with with people. Yeah. I, I certainly try to, to like, let them know, like, whoever they are, you come into my home, like your family. Oh. And that means that like, you're welcome to just flop on the couch. But I may say, <laughs> hey, can you grab this for me? Like, That's you know, great. like, um, Okay. That's such a gift, Rachel, really, because in this day and age, I also think people are quite parched for, for um, connections like Truth. that. And mm -hmm. that level of meaning and generosity, uh, emotional generosity in, in, a, in a conversation. So, you know, it's so interesting. We live in the age of social media, but we still are very far away from each mm -hmm. other on, for the most part. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I can imagine just how much of a gift it would be for, for someone to just meet you and be in that presence uh, because mm -hmm. it's, it's very rare. But now I'm going to mm -hmm. say right now that yeah. I think the best, the true, the true marker of, of what each of you, I think, embody. And Rachel, I want to say this, especially for yourself with the spheres that you're in, especially with, with, with artists, which sometimes artists can, can carry. There's an ego sometimes, which sometimes you need and stuff. But to navigate that as you are, as well-rounded as you are, is, um, it's, it's, I mean, it's rare enough that I, I, I find myself yearning for, for um, the person I'm speaking with right then and there to just drop the act and to, to come as they are completely. Mm. And uh, a lot of people, yeah, they're, they're, they're very afraid and they don't. And, but, but they're, they're trapped. It's almost like a, a sort of a matrix situation. They're trapped in that and they have systems and walls in place. It's very, very hard. But what I think marks both of you and, and Rachel, I'll just say this is, is the, the fact that what you're, the journey you're on is a, is a byproduct. Like the effect you have is a byproduct. It's not really the goal. I love that. I've always connected with that because it, that's the true marker. It's not like this is all this constructed thing to be truthful. Ray faces this sometimes in, in the coaching spheres. People will be like, have this big heightened flowery statement about being true, about being grounded. It's like, how about you just be grounded and then I'll receive that energetically and then we can just live and you can flop on the couch and then pick up that but, thing, you know? I've got a great floppy couch. Yes, yeah, floppy couch. Really couch. So this tells me, I'm sure you know some great artist stories, stuff that you've seen throughout your years. Yes. Right? Uh, what are some of the, cause you know, there are, I'm sure in your time, you've, you've been in moments where you just, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe I'm part of something like this. <laughs> this is going on mm. or that I have to pull this off. You know, what are, what are some stories you can, oh, just, sure. like, you can share with oh us about some of the craziest things you've experienced as an artist? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Like as a child, like. You know how a lot of kids put on plays for people and yeah. they make their family sit there and their family sits there and they suffer through whatever thing that the kids are going to be doing and throwing at them, right? <laughs> and I always had such a hard time doing that. Keyword I never suffering. wanted to. Like, exactly. <laughs> but as a child, I remember being embarrassed and feeling like it's not professional. It's not good enough. Like I can't, I can't do this. Like I can't Aww. subject people to this because I didn't like, I didn't feel like it was good enough. Oh and like, so I don't know what, like, I don't know what that means, but like, that's how it was. Yeah. And I remember being in, you know, because 
you, when you're starting out, especially like you do the gig, like you do the gig because you need the experience and because it's a role that you care about or that you're interested in or that's important for your voice or that, you know, is an interesting uh, thing to do acting wise or the people involved in it are ones that you want to be able to do work with later or more. Like there's a myriad of reasons why you choose to do a role. Mm. And like I remember once being in this show and we hadn't had the set fully done like until the and even then i think even at the dress rehearsal they were still like wheeling like a couch onto the stage <laughs> <laughs> and there, at one point i just i had my shoes and that i was supposed to you know as this character um i was supposed to throw across the stage um and they were supposed to be at my feet where i picked them up and threw them across the straight the stage in anger Mm. And they didn't have the shoes there. So I took off my own character shoes and I threw them across the stage and I walked to the side. And at the end of it, I said, tomorrow night, I need there to be a pair of shoes that I don't have to throw my own. <laughs> and like, I was, I remember just feeling like that was such a diva moment. Like, how dare I? I was quite young. But like, um, like, and the poor, like, everyone's doing their best. Everyone's yeah. doing their best. But like, you have limited resources, you have limited knowledge, you have, you know, especially when you're you're in a production that's like everyone's everyone's grabbing their bootstraps and just <laughs> trying to, oh trying my to make gosh. it, you know, and so I, I mean, that's a very small little example, but like, I guess those are the moments that stick with me because maybe it's a moment that was super intense and I wasn't particularly proud of. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like a moment where I'm like, you know, I could have been more professional or I could have been whatever. And and instead I let the diva come out for a minute. <laughs> and like, I love that. Yeah. That's incredibly <laughs> self-aware of you to choose yourself. In, and, and, and again, you speak of <laughs> oh. humility, you know, you didn't sort of just, you know, bestow this on someone else. You know, I love that you, you still made this moment about you. So <laughs> you have to, <laughs> people to don't look after number and one. And you yeah, having yeah. done your own work. I think that it takes a lot of self-awareness to, to look at yourself and to see those moments in yourself. That's really mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> yeah, it's important, right? Because that's how, I think that's how you end up being able to communicate the very best is when is when you sort of know what you are putting out into the world mm -hmm. emotionally or otherwise. Mm -hmm. On yeah. that note, I need to ask with some beautiful recollections of the past, um, your your path forward, we, we've alluded to, you know, well, we know that the Sydney Opera House is, is a lock, you know, down the line, <laughs> singing to the singing Great. to the elements. I'll you have to, but you have to call it. Pick a language it has to be Italian, French, something, and whatever you know, uh, cantando agli, agli elementi or something like that. We'll figure it out, something, and decide which language you're going to sing in and all that. But mm. in all seriousness, um, what do you envision, maybe for the rest of the year or going into next for for your path as a person and as an artist? Well, as I as I sort of settle into life here and as I, you know, am able to yeah, I'm 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 hopefully going to be working on a bunch of different things. So okay. there's lots of things I I can't I can't really give I love the mystery. Anything, it's cool, but, you know. I, I but, can, um, I'm just it's all good. <laughs> yeah. I'm but I'm 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 looking forward to doing a few a few concerts and then hopefully doing um doing a few shows and then seeing mm -hmm. what else comes, you know, in film TV. We'll see. We'll yeah. see how it goes. I'm yeah. loving it. Yeah. Everything well, is always a little bit amorphous, I think, when you're when you're you know in in this world. Oh my gosh, a, 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 a an actor singer podcaster to the core. What a what a wonderful way to kind <laughs> of tie. Hook. What a beautiful <laughs> way to tie a bow. I mean, you just tied the bow in the episode, didn't you? Look at you. Look, hey you. We you. love you so much. <laughs> Can you please always envision? I don't know if it's corny or sappy that there's just this constant beam. I think I mentioned this on the night of good vibes and good energy to yeah. you, from Ray and I to you and the family and everyone there, and yeah. inexorably, lots of lovely. I don't know dinners, opera like that has to at some point. We'll see you perform. We'll be in the love front that. row, and here's to many more. Absolutely. Really looking yeah. forward Thank to it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Really. Yeah. Deep. I yeah, even on that day, like like I said, a, a fellow person who doesn't enjoy small talk, mm -hmm. it's it really is like an oasis, you know, when you meet a kindred spirit oh. and you can just talk about <laughs> stuff that most people get a bit freaked out because it's too much, you know. So it's just mm. it's such a pleasure. We appreciate you. We admire the work that you're doing, the art that you're bringing into the world. 
uh, just how you're leading by example, uh, you know, and, and, and showing people how to model this work as an artist mm -hmm. is really inspiring. So thank you for that. There you thank go. You guys. Yeah. Appreciate Aww. it. It's really All right. Lovely. Have yourself a lovely rest of the day. Even oh, more. Thank you. Good evening, guys. <laughs> All right. Take talk it easy. Soon.